You know, Jesus is an amazing healer. He can touch people's lives and heal them from any disease that they have. And when people come to Jesus Christ, there will be a change that will happen in that person's life. The person will be healed. The person will have demons cast out of them. The person will have their sins forgiven. They will be cleansed. They will be washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. They will be given the Holy Spirit. They will be born again. Many things happen to people when they come to Jesus Christ and they ask Jesus to help them. And Somalis as well. There are many Somalis who have come to Jesus Christ, asked Jesus to forgive them of their sins, and Jesus has forgiven them of their sins. Many Somalis have seen dreams and visions about Jesus, and they have been forgiven of their sins. They have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. But of course, it doesn't come without a cost. There is a cost to being a follower of Jesus Christ. You don't become a follower of Jesus Christ and then you become rich and powerful and nobody touches you and nobody attacks you and you live a wonderful, peaceful life without any trouble. That's not what happens when you become a Christian. When you become a Christian, the world hates you because the world hates God. The things of this world are against God. Whether you go to Hollywood, whether you go to warlords, it doesn't matter where you go, the world does not like God. And so the world doesn't like anyone who follows God. That's why Christians are persecuted around the world. And when a Somali becomes a Christian, you know very well that that person, whether a male or a female, is going to be persecuted. Their family is going to try to take their kids away from them. The family might even try to get them killed. There will be something that will happen to that person who comes to the Lord Jesus Christ. Even when something good happens. We read about this man in the Bible who came to Jesus and he was blind and Jesus healed him. It says here in the Bible, So for the second time they called in the man who had been born blind and told him. God should get the glory for this because we know this man, Jesus, is a sinner. And the man replied, I don't know if he's a sinner or not, but I know this. I was blind and now I can see. So you see, Jesus did a miracle in this man's life. And this man was happy to testify to the truth, to tell people, listen, it was Jesus who healed me. But these men, these teachers of the religious law, did not believe that Jesus could do such a miracle. So they came back to the man and said, how did he heal you? And the man who used to be blind said, look, I told you once, weren't you listening? Why do you want me to tell you again? Do you want to become his disciples? And the teachers of the religious law got very mad at the man and said, Listen, you are his disciples, but we are the disciples of Moses. We know God spoke to Moses, but we don't even know where this man comes from. So here you have the teachers of the religious law who see a miracle right before their eyes A man used to be blind, now he's not blind. And the man tells them, it was Jesus who healed me. And the teachers of the religious law don't believe him. And so the man who used to be blind says to the teachers, this is strange, Jesus healed my eyes, and yet you say you don't know where he comes from. We know that God doesn't listen to sinners. But he is ready to hear those who worship him and do his will. Ever since the world began, no one has been able to open the eyes of someone who is blind. If this man was not from God, he could not 
have healed my eyes. And the teachers of the religious law got even more angry with the man who got healed. And they said, You were born a complete sinner. Are you trying to teach us? And they threw him out of the synagogue. Excuse me. So you can see, even if you are healed by Jesus Christ, and then you tell the people around you, it was Jesus who healed me, they're still not going to believe you. Because their hearts are set up against Jesus Christ, and they'll never humble themselves and agree with you. So you need to be prepared. As a Somali Christian, when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and he even does a miracle in your life, don't be surprised when other people don't believe you when you say it was Jesus who did this. Because they have it already in their minds that Jesus cannot heal people. Jesus cannot forgive people of their sins. Jesus cannot do miracles. Jesus cannot appear to you. All these things they don't believe Jesus can do. But in your heart, if you know that it was Jesus who did these things in your lives, then you need to be a faithful witness. You need to witness to them and just tell them the truth. And let God take care of the result. You just tell them the truth. You just say, listen, it was Jesus who healed me. I am not lying to you. I am telling you the truth. This is all that Jesus expects us to do. He doesn't want us to lie. He wants us to tell people the truth. You know, there was another man who came to Jesus And he wanted to have eternal life. He wanted to know that he is going to heaven. And this is the burden and the desire in many of our hearts. We want to know that we are loved by God. We want to know that we are going to heaven. We want to have our sins forgiven by Jesus Christ, by God himself. And so this man had the same desire. He came to Jesus and said, Teacher, What good thing must I do to receive eternal life? And Jesus said to him, You know what to do. Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do all these things and you will live. And the man said, I am doing all these things. Then Jesus answered, Well, if you want to be perfect, you need to sell everything that you have and give it to the poor and then you will have treasures in heaven, and then come and follow me. So Jesus said to the young man, listen, you need to get rid of everything you own, because there is only room in your heart for me if you get rid of all the other things that you value in your heart. If you value money in your heart, then there's not room for me in your heart, Jesus said. If you value something so much in your heart, then there is no room for me to come into your heart. You first have to sell everything you have. You have to say, I don't want these things. I am not going to hold these things valuable. I am not going to cherish these things. I am not going to think that these things are something great and wonderful and I'm going to love them in my heart and hold on to them in my heart. If you do that, there is no room for Jesus to come into your heart. So this man came to Jesus said, what do I have to do to get eternal life? And Jesus said, sell everything that you have. Because what Jesus is saying is that your heart is filled with the things of this world. And many Somalis, in their hearts, they value their culture. They value their clan. They value their family. They value their country. They value their language. There's many things that a Somali has in their heart that they value, and there's no room for Christ. There's no room for Jesus to come in because he's crowded out by the things of this world. 
You have to be ready to sacrifice everything for the Lord Jesus Christ. If you want him to come in and live in you powerfully, you need to give up those things in your heart and serve the Lord. Just like this rich man had many things in his heart. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Look at this man. I tell you the truth. It is hard for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. This young man went away very sad because he had a lot of money. So you can see, my dear Somali friends, my dear Somali brothers and sisters, and those of you who are Christians, you cannot value the things of this earth in your heart or else you will crowd out Jesus Christ. If you value your clan and your family and your culture and your language and your country so much that your heart is filled with these things, There's no room for Jesus Christ to come in. First, you have to say in your heart, Oh, Jesus means more to me than my clan. Jesus means more to me than my life. Jesus means more to me than anything on this earth. All of a sudden, you have opened your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ, and there is room for Him to come in. So please do that. If you truly want to be saved, if you truly want to go to heaven. The disciples came to Jesus and they were greatly astonished and they asked him, who can be saved? They were thinking, here's a man. He's a good man. He follows all the laws. He's kind to his parents. He gives money to the poor, but he's rich. If he can't go to heaven, who can? And then Jesus answered them and said, You know, with man it is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Then Jesus went on to say, truly, I tell you, anyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters, or who has left father or mother or wife, who has left their children or fields for my sake, You will receive a hundred times as much in this life and you will inherit eternal life. You must be prepared. When you follow Jesus, you must be prepared in your hearts to value Jesus Christ above everything else that your eyes can see. Everything above the earth Lord God, you need to to really uh, uh, accept Christ into your heart so that the things of this earth will disappear and fade. There are many Somalis who have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And they have been washed in the blood. They have been filled by the Holy Spirit of God. Many of them struggle when they come to giving up the things of this earth to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. But I encourage you, it is worth it. Give up the things of this earth, the man-made things, and follow God. Come into the kingdom of God. Forget your past. Forget what you have. Don't place any value on your own life because Jesus said, Those of you who want to save your lives, you will lose eternal life. So do not love this earth and this world more than the Lord Jesus Christ. Follow the Lord. Follow God. Give Him your heart. Seek His face and He will bless you. Let us pray. Lord God, I know it's difficult But when we accept you fully into our hearts, when we say there's nothing of value that this world can give me, not money, houses, 
riches or family and friends or culture or nationality. Those things are meaningless because when I stand before God, it will be me and God. Naked I came into this world. I had nothing when I came into this world. I will have nothing when I leave. So Lord, help us to live like that, to understand that we have nothing in this world that is of any value. Lord God Almighty, when it comes to eternal life, the only thing we have is the Lord Jesus Christ and putting our faith in Him, believing in Him as our Lord and Savior. And then we will be saved. So Lord God, help us all to serve You and to follow You and to believe that the things of this earth are not of any value when it comes to following the Lord Jesus Christ and going to heaven. May the Lord bless you. May he strengthen your faith in him. Have hope because God is powerful. God loves you. God cares for you. And God said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you.